chip. No. It was too late. Hey, take it easy. You're on Third Street. Go ahead, move it. Move it. <laughs> All right, guys, back with another educational video log, and this one is kind of a little more philosophical. I want to talk why people buy into bullshit and follow charlatans, okay? I get asked this all the time, and there really is no level to the stupidity that people will buy into. And even like smart people, smart people will get brainwashed by nonsense. And something happened for me the other day that really made it click as to why. I mean, people right now, there are people right now who believe the earth is flat. They believe the earth is flat. I'm just going to let that sink in just, just a little bit. And when you give them evidence, this is like anything in nutrition too. When you give them evidence, they claim that it's just a big conspiracy, right? How convenient. <laughs> Oh, you don't believe what I believe? Well, damn your evidence. It's just a big conspiracy. The government is working with big sugar and big meat and big dairy to cover everything up and try to NWO and fucking Illuminati, bro. Like, just... But something Greg Knuckles said on my podcast the other day uh, when we were... Sohi and I were interviewing him. He said that people... People don't have time to really understand many things well. They can only really understand a few things well. And I, I found that to be true. Um, and there's what's called the Dunning-Kruger effect, where basically when you have no knowledge of a subject, um, you are aware that you have no knowledge. But as you start to acquire knowledge, your confidence in your knowledge of the subject goes up very disproportional to your actual knowledge. And then once you actually get to the point where you have real knowledge and become kind of an expert, your confidence actually starts to drop in your own knowledge because you know so much that you know that you don't really know that much. But one of the main problems why people follow ideas or people or cults or things that are just full of shit is we are really good at learning things. What we are not good at is determining when one person is, sorry, we are really good at determining when someone has more knowledge than us in a certain arena. If we talk to somebody about any subject, usually we can make a pretty quick determination of, well, they're about my level of knowledge or they're way below me or they're way above me. But what we're not good at doing is looking at two people who have more knowledge than us on a subject and determining which one of them is actually correct. Okay? It would be like if I went to the World uh, Skateboarding Championships. If I watch the guy who gets 20th versus the guy who gets first, I am not going to know the difference. I don't know enough about skateboarding they both they both look really impressive to me, right? So when if people are debating on a topic, typically the person who wins is the person who explains it the simplest and with the most level of confidence. And that's a real problem for, for scientists because as scientists, if we're honest, we know that most things are not black and white. And it's very hard to explain them simply because everything has nuances to it there's usually not a black and white answer. We can't say, hey, this diet's bad, this diet's good, because it's just not that simple. I wish it was. I wish it was that simple. Uh, my graduate work would have been easier, and I would have had a very simple diet I could have sold to you all. Alas, it's not that simple. It's pretty complicated. So, what, who are you gonna tend to believe? Somebody that says, you know, I think that carbohydrates can be useful, but if you overconsume them, there can be some problems with that, especially if it causes you to overeat your calories. But we're not really sure because it's kind of variable from person to person how much you consume versus somebody says, 
Carbs release insulin, bruh. Insulin's bad because fat storage. It's much easier to believe the person who is giving you a simple answer that sounds confident. So there's no real point I guess I'm trying to make. What I would say is that be careful who you trust. Typically, if somebody explains something very simply, makes very broad sweeping generalizations, and uses superlatives like best, worst, always, never, that's usually a relatively good indication that they're probably full of shit. So, how to look for an expert? One, somebody who's willing to say the magic words, I don't know. Usually zealots won't say the words, I don't know. Two, um, somebody who will give context to most situations. If you ask them, hey John, are, are carbs bad? And they say, well, you know, if you got a fast metabolism, you know, and, and you got it, well, if you got a slow metabolism and they cause you to overeat and you have trouble, that is kind of the sign of an expert who's putting things in context and giving you ideas. Uh, somebody who just says, yeah, bruh, they bad. This is like a financial advisor. Um, you know, you say, hey, what's the best investment that I can make? Uh, a good financial advisor is probably going to sit down and be like, well, what are your goals? How much money do you have saved? When do you want to retire? They're going to go through a lot of stuff, give themselves a lot of context, and then come up with what they feel is most com They're not just going to say, buy gold, gold, gold is the answer. Buy gold, buy gold. Want to retire at age 30? Buy gold. Want to retire at age 70? Buy gold. Like, you realize that when somebody says carbs are bad, meat's bad, it's the equivalent of a financial advisor just saying, buy, buy, buy gold, 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 only gold. You have to put things in context. So hopefully this is helpful to you guys. Uh, I know I've been the victim of, in, in certain other topics, seeing two people debate about something and, and kind of just buying into whatever my preconceived notion was. In fact, there's research out there when it comes to politics, for example. Um, when people are presented with data that supports their political belief, it strengthens their political belief. When they are presented with data that opposes their political belief, showing that their belief in this particular area is wrong, it also strengthens their political belief. So I think one of the fundamental problems with our human species is at the end of the day, I think sometimes we like to belong to something more than we care about getting the actual truth of things. You look at all these kind of really zealous cults, low carb, vegan, whatever. I'm, there's really reasonable people who follow some of these practices, but it also lends itself to a lot of fanaticism, okay? And if you look at that, most of it, it's like they're almost like they're in some kind of army. They want to belong to a movement, to something. Um, so what I would say is save your beliefs for church, support your hypotheses with data. Thanks guys. If you enjoy my videos, please click like and subscribe. Check out my website, biolane.com. Later.